We exported the ODB++ file from Altium to ANSYS and confirmed that the layers and materials translated accurately to SIWAVE. In this video, we'll compare the artwork in Altium Designer with its translated version in ANSYS SIWAVE. First, let's examine the artwork in Altium Designer. Bring up the PCB editor in Altium Designer. Press L to bring up the view configurations. This dialog lets you adjust the board's appearance. For instance, you can adjust the opacity of the silkscreen layer. As you know, this layer is used to identify test points, component names, part names, reference designators, etc. You'll also see some outlines for the components and the parts. We did not include this silkscreen layer for the ODB++ export to SIWAVE. SIWAVE can automatically display the reference designators, the part names, and so forth. For now, uncheck this layer in Altium. The names and part numbers are not displayed anymore. Close this dialog. You'll see a number of options on the bottom right of the toolbar. Click the PCB option here. From the pop-up menu, select PCB to bring up the PCB dialog. Among other things, from here you can select all the components and view their footprints on the board. Don't confuse these footprints with the part outlines that you saw in the silkscreen layer. From the PCB dialog, we can also zoom in and see components individually. We'll see a few components directly on the board after generating a Bill of Materials report. Close the PCB dialog. You can generate a Bill of Materials report for this board as shown. You can export this report into a spreadsheet. This report presents the included components with their reference designators, part names, and their descriptions. Let's pick a few key components and locate them in the board. We'll look over the components with the reference designators U100, U201, and U800. We'll also check out U503, P703, and U802. Make sure you have the silkscreen layer in LTM active. Place the cursor near the component you wish to see, and press the Page Up hotkey to zoom in. This is U201, the IC for the DDR2 RAM device. Press the Page Down key to zoom out. Fit the board. Place the cursor near U100 and zoom in. This is an IC for the BGA microprocessor. U800 is an FPGA IC. U503 is a multifunctional power management unit. P703 is a B-style USB connector used to deliver a 5-volt supply from off-board. Flip the board now. Zoom in to find U802 down below. This is a buck step-down regulator. These components and others that came in during translation can also be seen on the board in ANSYS SIWAVE. Simply hover over any component or any part with the mouse, and SIWAVE displays its name and details in a text box as shown. For example, here is the micro USB connector P703. It's good to know where these components reside in the board because in the future when you run a DCIR simulation in SIWAVE, you'll need to assign voltage sources or current sinks for some of these very components on the board. In general, knowing the topology of the board can be very helpful. For example, when seeing a current density plot, it might help to isolate problem areas on the board better. Let's do a side-by-side -side comparison of the artwork in ANSYS SIWAVE and LTM Designer. They look very similar. Remember, in SIWAVE, we had turned on the visibility of the vias. If you notice any missing geometry, first be sure that you imported the nets associated with it. Consider also that the missing geometry could be part of the hidden dummy net. For instance, a pad in the component P500 is not seen in SIWAVE. From the single-ended nets window, unhide the dummy net. That pad can be seen now. Clearly the pad was part of the dummy net. Remember that the dummy net comes in hidden in SIWAVE when you translate a board from a third-party tool. The vias that are evident in SIWAVE for this design can also be seen in Altium. For a clearer comparison, let's display only the vias in SIWAVE and set their plating ratio to 100%. In the same way, display only the vias in the 2D layout mode in Altium. This plating ratio can be modified in SIWAVE using the pad stack editor. We've already performed a sanity check with a few components to be sure that they came in accurately in SIWAVE. These are displayed again for your easy reference. The part outlines that you see on the artwork in SIWAVE represent the footprints seen in Altium Designer. The sizes of the footprints are somewhat different in SIWAVE. 
This is because SI Wave ensures that the boundary for each of the components is a compact rectangle, containing all the pins associated with that component. The five large concentric circles seen in Altium are visible because we are also viewing the top solder mask layer. After translating the layout geometry data, you need to perform an additional step to correct the values of the passive components. I'll show you how to do that in a later video in this series. I have set up this PCB for simulation in SI Wave after correcting its RLC values and defining current and voltage sources. I generated a current density plot after running a DCIR analysis in SI Wave. In part 10, I'll show you how to merge a breakout board to this main PCB. And in part 11, I'll show you how to import the properties of the passive components for both the boards simultaneously.